This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. start recording button and there he is one of my favorites steve kravitz hello steve hey alex how are you you know in these little get-togethers that you and i have we've spent more time talking to each other than we ever did when we lived in san francisco right and that's the truth that's, that's the truth that's the absolute tr- yeah that's the truth folks uh how you doing uh, i'm stressed out he's stressed out now uh, we don't want Steve stressed out because you don't take the stress well, do you? No, I don't. Not at all. I don't know anybody who does. Do you? Do I get stressed out? Yeah, I get stressed out. But I get stressed out by stuff that shouldn't stress me out. Like equipment failures. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, All kinds of little problems. Trying to solve little problems, you know. Right, and it uh, just doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't sit well with you. Doesn't doesn't sit well with me, right? So you know, um, I it it uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it doesn't sit right with me, uh, and and so I mean because what happens is I because I run this little thing, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm like my own tech support. You know? Oh right, and so when something isn't working. I have to deal with it. And half the time, I was thinking about this, half the time that I have to deal with it, uh, I, it involves calling some other technical support. Okay? Okay. And I know when that happens, I better plan on being up to it, up to here in it for about three hours. Oh, is that right? Well, first of all, you got to wait for him to answer the phone. Yeah, no kidding, That's huh? problem number one. Oh, well, thank you so much. We really, we appreciate your call. No, you don't. If you did, a human being would answer right now. Right, okay. right, right. You don't appreciate my call. In fact, we're experiencing higher than call of, we're experiencing higher than call of volume. <laughs> yeah, right. So you've been there. Oh, yeah. I once, I tell, I love to tell the story about the time that I, uh, what was the problem that I was having? Oh, I couldn't get my, uh, I, I couldn't get my phone. My, oh my! I couldn't get my watch to go online because I have it so that you know I can go on. I, I have a, a cell phone number for this, so I can right. I can call you with my watch. I don't have to have my phone around me or anything. But it wasn't locked into the uh, to the phone number. It wasn't working. So I called. I swear to you, seven hours later. Seven hours. Seven hours later, they said to me, well, we can't figure out what's wrong. Yeah. Seven hours for them to say, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. I'm talking to, I'm talking to AT&T. You know, I'm not talking to Apple. I'm talking to right. AT&T because there's service. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is here. Hey, man. After seven hours... So what do I do? I, I'm sitting there and I'm just frustrated as hell. And I go back to their site. And it says, there's a little little button you push. It says, uh, turn on phone or something like that. For, uh, turn on your watch. And I click on it. And the next thing I know, my watch is working. Now we spent seven hours and they didn't think to go look at that little button you have to push on their own site. No, because that's too obvious. Too obvious. Too easy. Too easy. Yeah. And so, I'm, you know, when something happens here, whether it's the cable phone company or the cable company, or you can't even get a hold of the cable company anymore. No. To get a number to call them, you really have to be a genius at Google, okay, to find a number. Right. Because otherwise, they don't want to talk to you. 
They yeah, want yeah, to, yeah. And they want to fix everything remotely, you know. So I remember once I had a problem with my uh, my internet, right? And I uh, I did call them and I went online and said, uh, here, go through this process, right? And I clicked the button and they tested it and then it got turned back on. So, you know, the, I guess I didn't need a human being, but neither do they. They don't want to hire human beings to deal with human beings. No, they don't. We're a, we're a major annoyance to them. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. So that's the kind of thing that stresses me out, you know. And it always happens. It always happens right after my show at night. So it happens at midnight. Okay. And now I'm dealing with it till three in the morning and now I decide, well the hell with it, I'll deal with it tomorrow, which is the, the you know, the smart thing to say is I'll deal with this tomorrow because tomorrow it's a fresh problem. Right. Right. And, and you come at it with a different angle. Right. A different perspective. A different perspective. But then you lie in bed and all you're thinking about is did I do this? Did I do that? Did I make this work? Did I not make that work? That, so you want to talk about me getting stressed? That's what stresses me. That's what stresses you out, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, what what other things besides? Well, you 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 have to deal now with landlords, right? You, I don't know if you said this on the program. No, the the the, the landlord sold the building. Okay. Well, and it it closes on the twenty second, and I'll find out on the twenty third whether I have to move or not. I've already started filling out applications well, for wait, for new apartments. Well, wait a minute. Number one. I don't care what state this is. I mean, this could be Texas, okay? I don't think they can just throw you out on your ear because they bought the apartment. No, I don't either. No. And I but they could raise my rent. Let, let me ask you this question, okay? Is this something somebody has told you is going to happen? Or, no. Or is, this, or is this your own worries projecting on the problem? On the situation. The, the latter. You don't know that they might have come to you and say, you know, you've been such a great person here, you know, tenant. Right. Uh, we're going to lower your rent. Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. Or they, they say, um, uh, you're such, we're not going to throw any of the tenants out because by law we can't just because we buy an apartment. And that may be the case in your, in your neck of the woods, too. You should go online and just ask about tenant rights in, uh, in Massachusetts. But I, right. would, I would think you have tenants' rights here. They can't just throw you out on your ear. Right. You've paid your rent every month. You've been a good tenant. You've been no problem to them. You don't play loud noises at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're fine, right? Oh, yeah. You're not Mr. Party. So no, not anymore. So, what? you know, why would they throw you out? See? Oh, I don't know, Alex, because I'm just... You know. Yeah. All right. Have I calmed you down a little bit? That maybe you you're you're like me. You think of the worst case scenario. Absolutely, I'm projecting. Uh, what's his name? The guy who wrote uh, "Swimming to Cambodia." I'm trying to remember his name right now. My mind, you know, it's not been great lately. But anyway, I was interviewing him, and I talked to him about traveling. And when I traveled, I had to. I thought about everything that could go wrong. Okay. Before I went. So by the time I was ready to go on vacation, I was a mental mess. Okay. Okay. And he said, I do the same thing. I said, really? You swam to Cambodia, didn't you? Uh, anyway, um, uh, and he said to me, um, the reason we do that is we're control freaks. I said, what? I'm not a control. He says, yes, you are. What you're doing is you're going through every possible problem that could occur, and you're ready okay. for it. You're ready for it, right? That's the way you're controlling the situation. Now, none of those things are going to happen. Everything's going to go just fine, but you worry about it because you want sure. to, because you want to control the situation. So if it does fuck up, you go, "See, I told you so." Right. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. So what you're doing is you're trying to think of all the possibly the worst outcomes of this situation. And well, I've started applying for apartments, and they're all on a one-year waiting list. Yeah. You're on a one-year waiting list? 
A waiting list on three different apartments. Wait a minute, a year waiting list? Right, and you have to fill out an application that's 60 pages long to get on the waiting list. They, every time, when I rented in, in a lot of cases, they made me give them my last year's income tax return. Oh, is that right? And, and my business manager said, uh-uh, you know, we'll send you the final page or something like that, but we're not going to send you the whole right. rigmarole. But, you know, it, 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 I don't know, down here in New York, tenants have rights. Okay, I found that out going through my thing, right? Right. And, and they have rights, and uh, uh, we, we hopefully the rights are, you know, are the same where you are. But what happened here, I had a, my uh, lawyer was a landlord-tenant lawyer. He didn't do landlords, he just did tenants. Okay. Okay, because he felt that would be a conflict of interest. Uh, so he, all he did were tenants. Uh, and uh, he said that when he goes to legal conventions and they say, what do you do? He says, I'm a tenant landlord attorney. Right. And they went, what? What? The, he, he said, yeah. He said, the reason why they're in New York is because there are so many rights the tenants have and there's so many laws regarding the tenants that you have to have a lawyer to suss them out. Is that right? But in so other, now I what, I gotta hire a lawyer? Well, no, in your state it's probably not like that. You probably, if you wanted to go look for a tenant landlord lawyer, you'd have a hard time finding one. Right. See? But they exist in New York City because there are all these laws and all these horrible, horrible landlords. Oh my God, they are the worst. <laughs> you know, they buy up slums and they want to keep them slums. Right. They don't want of to buy they, do. they want to buy, buy a piece of property and make it better. Right. You know. So I I I, I never have been able to figure that one out. But anyway, so that don't worry about it yet. It's not time to worry. And all you, you know, if you if you're on a year waiting list at these other places, it would have been a year waiting list a month from now, right? Right. Would it be in an eleven month, a month from now, or would it still be a year? No, it still be a year to three years. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, so, so, number one, they can't throw you out of an apartment. You got no place to go. Right. What? But they could raise my rent. They could double my rent. I don't think. I don't think they can do that. I think you. Did you sign a lease? No. No. No lease. No lease. I think there are laws. I, I would I would look it up. I'll look them up for you, as a matter of fact. You know. All right, do that. You know, I mean, I may be right, I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. Uh, no, but I right, may be right and I may be wrong, but I, I don't think that I'm, uh, uh, I, I think you've got some, some you know, uh, rights here as a, right. as a tenant. Okay, I can't believe that in Massachusetts there aren't tenant laws, right? So. No, there's got to be some laws. I mean, I there's got to be some laws in my favor. If you were calling me from Texas or Wyoming or someplace like that, I might say, "Well, a lot of luck to you." Right. But that's Massachusetts. Massachusetts is a pretty progressive state. Very progressive. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, I don't think that they would let people living in apartments you know, be thrown out on their ear because somebody else buys it. In fact, that's one of the things a person who buys it must, must have to contend with. I mean, I know that if somebody, that tomorrow they decide to sell this this apartment house. Right. Um, they couldn't throw anybody out. We have rent stabilization laws. I have, we have leases. We have an expectation of renewal on leases. Right. You know, things like that. So... It's really a, a much tougher to get people out. That's not one of the things you consider, or even raising the rent. Right. You can only raise the rent on them by so much every two, three years. Right. And it's it's only a certain amount. So here in in New York, it's a whole different deal. Now, but I don't think up there it's a, it, it's terrible. I, I I think they want you. I don't think they want you out in the street. 
Let me put it that no, way. No, I don't think so. You know, and um, it, it, it's, harder to, it, it's harder to throw somebody out of an apartment than you think. They can't say, we want you out by Tuesday, you know. Right, right, so, right, right. So don't worry about it. These new guys may come in. They may be better than the old guys. You don't know that. They may not raise your rent at all. Why should they? You know. Right. Um, you're you're a happy tenant. They don't they don't want you leaving because when you leave, they then have a cost of refurbishing the place, so the next tenant can come in. And right. Use it. So it's not to their advantage to throw you out of there. You know. Well, and, we'll see. As we'll as see what happens next week. As long as you're a good tenant, I don't think anything's going to happen next week. I think they're going to buy the place. They're going to maybe they knock on your door and say, "Hi, we're the new landlords. If you have any problems, here's our number." Blah 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 blah. See you later. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, they buy it as to make, of course, to make money. But they, they, they're not going to. Don't worry about. It. But you will. From your mouth to God's ears. You will. You will. You'll. 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 You'll worry about it. Uh, because I would too. Right. That's what I do. I right. Worry. That's what I do. You know. He, here, here's the thing. We were talking about technology. You, have you, you've de done te dealt with cable companies or tech companies sure. of one sort or another? How many times when somebody goes something goes wrong with your tech in your apartment, and you're going to call these guys? Do you feel it's your fault? Never. Never. Really. Because I always, always think it's my fault somehow. And I call them, oh. and, and I suddenly realize, no, it's their goddamn fault. The fact that I'm not getting a signal through my, you know, through my... Uh, uh, cable uh, box. Cable box or whatever. It's not me. It can't be me. There's nothing I did. Right. That's why it's not my fault. But And they make you feel like it's your fault. Uh, here, here's what's the first thing you call the cable company? Your cable isn't working, right? Right. What's the first thing they tell you to do? Shut the cable box off. Turn it on again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say before you called them, you turned it on and off about three times to make sure that that wasn't the problem, because you know right. that. They, you'll say to them, "Well, I don't need to. I've been doing. I did it three times before I called you." They will tell you, "We'll do it again." Do it again. Yeah, and what is the definition of insanity? Doing the doing same, the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. Uh, yes. So what have we now made abundantly clear? The cable company is insane. It's insane. Yeah, exactly. So you know, and it's oh, so I got the I got the phone that you sent me. Now that that's another thing I wanted to talk about. I was going to do it on our next interview, but you know. I got the phone. Yeah. And I got to go to Spectrum to get it, you know, uh, turned on and, and, and paired over, get rid of my old phone and put the new phone on. Yeah. But they, they only, right now, I'm, I, I got so bogged down with finding an apartment, I couldn't deal with it. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I understand that. But, you know. So that's what's going on with that. But it's I don't even know how to turn that phone on. Oh, it's just at the very at the side or something. You just push it hold it down for a couple of seconds and then you'll see an apple next thing you know you'll have a thing that says hello I put it I, I completely put it back to you know brand back to standards it, 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 uh, yeah reset the whole phone right so, so that and I got all my stuff off of there okay you, you know so that all you have to do is get that thing turned on I think it's a matter of them just programming a sim card in the phone right, and, and, and and changing all my contacts getting all my contacts on the new phone yeah, that I now the question is whether you can do that I don't know if you can do that because you've got an Android phone right now right You're going over to an Apple phone there may be a conversion process they, can go through. they can help you with that they're, you know, they're more than happy to help you with that well spectrum spectrum the cable company here yeah and also the spectrum mobile mm -hmm. they have one store for all of Worcester Really? One store. So you go, but have you, have you gone to, down to them yet? No. 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 Well, just take No, I have to make an appointment to go down to them. Otherwise, it's like a two hour wait. 
Oh, God. What is with this world? What happened to the days where you walk into the Spectrum store and they say, nice to have you here. Can we help you with something? Right, 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 right. Yes, I want to get my phone turned on. Well, that's a three-year wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. You don't want my business? You know, there are other phone companies. If you right. If you don't want to go with Spectrum. Um, right, I know that. And uh, that phone I have, I think, is an AT&T phone, but I think by that time... They made it so you can use it with any system. Okay. You know, they may tell you it's only AT&T only phone, in which case you go get AT&T. Right. Fuck Spectrum. Right. You know, what have they done for you? you know. Nothing. You know what I heard is is the best mobile um, uh, company. By the way, you may be, do you hear anything? In the no. Because they're, 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 they're pointing our building, which means they're, drilling out the old grout and putting in new grout, right? Right. And uh, I can hear through my earphones, and I don't know I can't if, hear it. If, if the audience can. Uh, no. But I can hear it, because they're right on our level now. I can hardly oh, wait till right? they come in here, and I'm trying to interview you on, like, a Wednesday, and uh, the, the, what do you call it, is they're grouting right outside the window. This is over a bit, so. But anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So you just go, you know, you go down there and just see first what, you know, what you might have to, they might say, oh, well, you can only use this with AT&T, but I don't think that's true by the time that phone came out. That phone's only about four years old. Right. It's an i6. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it should, you should be able to put what they call a new SIM card in there. Right. And, and, and or reprogram the SIM card for Spectrum Mobile. Right. Right. I, I know they carry you know, iPhones and so on, so. Yeah, should, I know they do. You should be able to. Once you do that, I mean, they, they'll help you turn it on, but the, getting all your contacts over, I, I don't know how you do that, to be honest with you, because I've never had an Android phone and then had to go over to an Apple phone. Right, But I'm right. sure there is some method of doing it. And I'm sure I'll have to pay off my Android phone. You have to pay it off? Right, because I'm paying it, you know, monthly. Hmm. Well, uh, what can I say about that? Hmm. Maybe you can sell it back to them. I don't know. No, I don't know. Ask, we'll see. Ask them about that. You know, um, in which case, you guess you're paying for my phone every month. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I think the, the iPhone I got you is better than the one you've got. Right, right. Okay. Uh, I swear by them, you know. And that's a, they're expensive phones too. That's, yeah, know, no kidding. When I bought that, that was like an eleven hundred dollar phone. It's outrageous. Yeah, but you well, know. no, it's not an eleven hundred dollar phone. It's a, it's a thousand dollar camera and a hundred dollar phone. You're right about that, because they keep selling the camera. Right. <laughs> See how good the picture of this phone takes? No, I want to know how good a call does it get. Right, How right, clear right. Is the service? Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Don't worry about that. We had that solved ten years ago. Here, the phone now has more pixels than it's ever had before. And I'm going. I didn't, I didn't buy the phone for the camera. Although I got to tell you, every year I used to, all my life, I always owned a broadcast capable video camera. Okay. okay. I get rid of one. New one comes out. 4K. I buy that one. All okay. Right? I haven't bought a new phone in years. You know why? Because this iPhone shoots better than any of those things I could go out and and, uh, and buy. Well, you have an iPhone 13, don't you? I have a 13, yeah. And it, I, I go out, I'm doing 4K without even breathing heavy. Right, I, you know. right. The only difference is I like a handheld camera because you can do zooms better and things like that with it. But, you know, it, it that all changes. but. It's nice, you know, I think you'll enjoy the phone, and uh, I've been willing, wanting to get rid of it, but, you know, Bubs never came through by saying, oh, send it to me, I'll get it turned on. He still, Bubs is still using a flip phone. He went out there, he told me he had to get a new phone for the new services, so he went and got one. He found the last flip phone in existence that met the standards. My, land, my current landlord uses a flip phone. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, some people don't want to change. Hey, listen, I just looked. We're running out of time here. 
Uh, Is that right? Yeah, you want to do this again next week? Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the lovely and attractive Stephen Kravitz. Wave goodbye, Stephen. He'll be here again next week. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, and then I got to turn on the lights. Uh, yeah, okay, all righty. Anyway, uh, hello everybody, how are you? Another evening of uh, fun and games here. Uh, you know, I'll just look at something here. I just, uh, I've got, I, I keep looking at my medical reports because I'm trying to figure stuff out. Uh, uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I talked to my doctor today. I'm, I'm, it doesn't, doesn't look good, folks. It doesn't look good. Anyway. Where do we go? Okay. We want to let everybody in here. Okay. All righty. And uh, let's see here. We'll bring in the Zoom panel. There they are. There's our group of people. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Hello. Good. good. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. good. Yeah. Well, good, what? Anyway. <laughs> hmm? Where do we go? Okay. I want to let everybody in here. Okay. Jeff, you got to right. kill, you kill your audio, Jeff. Really? Yeah, there you go. You're fine now. Thank you. Yeah, you did it. Ah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <coughs> so anyway, getting better. Huh? I'm getting better. Getting better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very little. Yeah. Step by step, inch uh, by inch. I used to be a smart guy, so. Yeah, well, so did I. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm just exhausted. I didn't get much sleep last night. I can uh, imagine. I, uh, I bet the doctor told you that uh, they sent you that letter by mistake, right? Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh oh. Nope. 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 It was. It was. Uh, it was wrong for him to ask me to get the uh, 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 sonogram. But uh, after we did a little bit of talking, he had a suggestion. So I'm now going to see an oncologist. <laughs> because chances are he's concerned that it might be cancer. Yeah, why not get it tested first? I mean, that's kind of a leap. But what do you, mean, what wait a minute, you don't know what you're talking about. My the mother first, had it and no, didn't the, have no, cancer. The first, so. per, first person that that was suggested to me at the emergency room to see was yeah. a hematologist oncologist. Oh. And when I called them, there was some goofiness where they didn't said, oh, well, you've got to be, be, have a, a report that says you have cancer. They, it, it was all wrong, okay? Oh, I but so today that. when I talked to my doctor, he said, uh, well, you know, he said, I'm a bit concerned about it because, uh, you know, it could be something, it might not be something, but I want to send you to a uh, hematologist-oncologist. That's who handles this sort of thing. Okay. All right? So who am I supposed to believe, you or my doctor? Your doctor. I would say, yeah. That's the first I ever heard of the uh, request to go see an oncologist or a hematologist. Well, an doctor. oncologist looks for cancer. Treats cancer. No, yes. he looks for cancer as well. Okay. You know, he doesn't just treat cancer. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, so. All right. Well, so, you'll do that, and uh, then so, you'll know. Well, so I have an appointment with a oncologist next week, next uh, set, next Friday. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Never gets easy. Never gets easy. It's pretty quick. Huh? That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick, yeah. yeah. I'll probably yeah. die just as fast. <laughs> You're in uh, tough shape. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's only, your problem is right up here. Well, I have numerous, what's called numerous uh, um, rounded lymph nodes. Yes. Which can be, 50% of the time, are 
cancerous. And mine is in a supraclavicle area, which is, uh, it, it, it has a good chance of being malignant. So, you know. But then it's lymphoma, and they treat it. And uh, my doctor said, hell, you know, it's not, it's not going to kill you. You know, you'll, you just you'll find out if it's Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, if that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, I hope one's it, a little more one's a little <clears throat> more treatable than the other. They're both treatable, from what I understand. Yeah, but are they the most common? Yeah, those two are very common. The most common people, lymphomas. Yeah. Yeah, the trouble is, is people that wait and don't go get the doctor visit, and then the oncologist, then it spreads through the lymph system. But you're on top of that, so. Well, I don't know that it hasn't spread to the lymph system. Although it wasn't found anywhere else in my body when they did the... Uh, and you're not feeling any more abnormal than normal, right? Well, I, I feel tired a lot lately. Okay. Well, yeah. That could be a lot of different things. That could be getting over COVID. That could be your age. That could be the day of the week. You know, who knows? And it could be cancer, I guess. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Could be, you know. You know. It's something we have to all look forward to unless we all of a sudden drop dead. Well, it's the, the thing I don't want is I don't want constant treatments for this and treatments for that and chemo this and chemo that. And, you know, so what happens? I live five extra years and in those five extra years, my life is made a living hell. Could happen. You know. It's something to evaluate, right? Yeah. No, yeah. Hero no heroic efforts. Yeah. But... Uh, Let's talk about something more positive. No. Than cancer. No. No. Because that's all I'm thinking about. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that then. No, but let's not. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Let's not. Let's talk about something more positive yeah. than cancer. Yeah. So, uh, Charlie, what's happening with you? Well, of course, I got rained out tonight, so I'm sitting here. So you're here, sitting here. You made our show. What now? What does the T-shirt tonight say to the? says be greater than average <laughs> oh well you are such a physicist <laughs> i try you try <laughs> be greater than average isn't that cute it's pretty cool is the uh, is the uh, is the e the kind of the e thing is that average yeah that's the sum that sigma which means <laughs> The sum of I to N, and then you divide by the number. Yeah. You had to ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I just realized I haven't gone to my physics class in a long, long time. You're not the only one. What do you mean you haven't <laughs> gone to your... either. It's been 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you go to Same a... Same here. Did you yeah, go to I'm a physics here. class, uh, Jeff? Of course. What do you mean, of course? I didn't. <laughs> From high school, I know. Did you take physics in high school? Okay. Sure. I, I went to a school in Brooklyn, New York. It was called Brooklyn Tech. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, technical school, you got to take physics. You got you to take that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, that... I, took it, I took it in college. And, and yeah, uh, plus outside that. of Charlie, have any of you been able to apply it to your daily lives? Yeah. Really? I think you apply it up anything you learn like that. I think you apply even if you don't have a job in it or anything. Mm. Really? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> it changes the way you think, all these things, hopefully. Yeah. No, I think I used to use it uh, emotionally, I guess, <laughs> uh, physically once in a while. Yeah. I I always use simple stuff. Yeah, that's the way. My Help you play a pool. Hmm. Yeah, play a pool. Sure. Yeah. <sighs> Boy. I mean, I, you know, when I went to, I went to college to start with and thought I was going to be an electrical engineer like my father after mm -hmm. I got out of high school, and after two years of that and all the goddamn math that I didn't get real well. Um, I moved on to microbiology because then I thought maybe I'll be a doctor. And I, while I was a cop, I was going to uh, college and continued. It took me about six years to get my degree in microbiology, my bachelor's. And then I never, I thought, oh, shit, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a cop the rest of my life. <laughs> so 
but I think all that helps you. It's uh, you know, it's, oh, sure. it adds to the education. <clears throat> so. It's called education. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So where is everybody tonight? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. It's Thursday. Yeah. Brian's got a car show. You know. Yeah. Oh, does Neil's he... trying to find his brain. I don't know. <laughs> does Brian have a car show tonight? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. He probably does. He's him and cars, man. My goodness. Yeah. All <laughs> over, all over Facebook. It's good. It's, they're yeah. nice cars. Yeah, he's the guy to go to. You want to know something about cars? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I never got that much into cars. You know, to me, they were basic transportation. Yeah, me too. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because I had the money for it, I usually bought good cars. You know, ones that kids would go. As I drove by, <laughs> like the 300ZX, like the 300Z, all that thing, yeah, that was Z, dope. whatever it's called, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, but I never, it wasn't like I bought it because I wanted a fast car and I, I was into cars and so on. It just looked nice, yeah. you know, and I knew it would get me from one place to another. So, so that was the difference. Uh, you know, yeah. Brian likes nice cars, and he bought a McLaren because they're really nice cars. Yeah, and they're very expensive if you buy them new. I think he said he bought his used. You hear that? On top of everything, we have allergy season right now. Yeah, uh -oh. you ready to start here too? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Depends well, on what you're allergic to in California. You, most hay fever is in April and May here. So, here it's year round. Be, is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Marjorie has allergies, right? And she has an allergy doctor, and he says that it's it's every every month of the year there's something out there. Yeah. Wow. Well, that that must be the pits, I guess. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. Hello, uh, Tony. How are you? I'm all right. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> <Donnie. laughs> My sister's mad. I'm not going to Washington with them tomorrow. To Washington for What's what? Happening? Yeah, you know why? Uh, my brother-in-law's dad years ago. He's a WW2 vet. He was a POW. He got shot down, so he was uh, liberated. But he got he got buried in Arlington years ago. Mm -hmm. They're going to put flowers on. I just don't feel like going down there for two nights. Just so to put my, flowers on a grave. Yeah, they're gonna because he hasn't done it like in two years. So he wants to go down. So they're leaving tomorrow morning at like six thirty. They'll be home Sunday, I think. She says, don't come with us. You're fun in the car. Oh, well, yeah, that'd be real fun. Yeah. Mm. yeah she'll drive me crazy. She, she wants to drag me into the car. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you start to say she'll drive you crazy. You mean you'll drive her crazy? <laughs> no, she, well, she likes my company, my sister. So they were kids. I said, I'm going to stay home. My brother's taking me to the beach Saturday, so we'll go to Rockaway. Oh, okay. So then I said, just message us. I wish them a nice trip. They're leaving early. Yeah. If I would have gone, I would have called Joe from my hotel looking for Biden. I said, <laughs> looking for what? Joe. <laughs> Joe Biden. Looking for Joe Eggs, Biden. $4. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Why would you call me about Joe Biden? No, I would have called you. I would have got my own room from. I would have called from the, the Hyatt down there or the Marriott. No, Marriott to stay in it. I would have brought my laptop. That's right. Yeah, what way, am I going to do? off of Joe. Okay. I know. I was just joking. Get, a little bit. I got to give him a little bit of a I mean, break. you get an, a guy for president who happens <laughs> to be a nice guy. And a fairly moral human being, true, or as moral as you can be, and be in politics that long, and then you just—I know—I go crazy bad, right away. Yeah, you go <laughs> crazy over him. And the fact is that, you know, from a moral standpoint, he's terrific. You know, he's a—he's a nice guy. He's a decent person. And I got homework from Philly. He gave me a book. I got to read a chapter. What is, is he, what is the book? Hold on, I got it inside. It's about selling. Oh, so no, far, no, a little no, bit. No, more. You don't have to go you know, get the, that. You know, yeah, it's it was it's actually pretty interesting. So I got to read chapter three. I feel like I'm in school with a syllabus. <laughs> yeah, but why do you want to know how to sell? Are you planning on selling anytime soon? Well, he said it could help me sell comic book because you can, you can, I guess, put it into. A, he calls it like a. You can use it for any type of thing. I said, let me read it. I'll read anything. So it's actually quite interesting so far. Yeah. I think he's good. Oh, there's Brian. I think hey, he's going to apply at 7 Eleven. Let's see. Is Brian, Brian, is, Brian, are you at your office? No, I'm in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen. Oh, nice. Wait, wait a minute. On the island. On the island in the kitchen. 
Uh, uh, why are you in the kitchen? Adrian corrected me. I'm on the island, not in the kitchen. <laughs> why are you in the kitchen? Why not? I wanted to be like Jeff. I want to start touring my house. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. No, uh, Tiffany. Oh my God! What the heck is going on with this? <laughs> um, with the what? lights are bright. Yeah, I'll try down. Uh, Tiffany's. Yeah, I know. So uh, Tiffany's in the office. She's doing some work. So I'm leaving her alone. Oh, you're leaving her alone, mm. and do, you you you've been banned to the uh, to the kitchen, huh? Yeah. Well, let's see your kitchen. Lower, <laughs> move your camera around a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, let, let me do something here. You know what the lights look like? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. He's. Ah. Yes. He's. He's making it a little nicer there. Oh, I'll be oh. honest. And there is there is the star of our show, ladies is. and gentlemen, Adrian. Well, there she goes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah, no, we did uh, Carmel, Carmel, uh, Carmel by the Sea, Monterey. I think you, you've been there a lot, right, Alex? Yeah, a long you time ago. Yeah, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, so we did a. Uh, everybody from all over the world comes for this show, so they have a whole week of events. Um, so it's it's pretty huge. So, uh, Dusenbergs and just unbelievable cars. Uh, they had a they had a turbine car there that was pretty famous in the '60s and. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's, what was yeah, the turbine really, car? What was the name of it? I yeah. Um, I think my friend posted something on there. But, <laughs> and, uh, so so they do a tour. So the cars are in the show. They get extra points on Thursday if they do a tour of a uh, seventeen mile drive. So I go there early in the morning, see all the cars that are ready to drive, and then everybody gets ready nine o'clock. Then they start leaving the cars out onto seventeen mile drive. So it's pretty cool to see all these cars cars going and they do the 17 mile drive yeah they do a, a version of it and then they come back so yes yeah, so you get to hear all the cars go so it's pretty yeah is is the uh sports car that you're talking about that's uh not it was run by a battery engine or something and was it a silver looking car or a gray car no, this this one's an orange one. The the turbine car. Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you referring to a car that you stole, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I haven't got caught on any of that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't do it. Try uh, it. Uh, 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 you know, I, I let me. See, I'm going to mention a car to you. I want to see. Let's see how good he is with old cars. Mm -hmm. Does anybody here remember a car called the Davis? Okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it once before. Yeah, the Davis. Uh, I should. I should. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, Davis Auto, I guess I, I know. Then it'll give me the name of a car dealership. I'm sure. <laughs> Davis, Davis Automobile. Okay. Auto. Mobile. Okay, Davis Automobile. Okay, let me see what I come up with here. Uh, there it is. There it is. It's in on Jay Leno's garage, actually. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me, let me see here. I, let me see if I can go to my. Uh, do I still have this set up? My computer? Yeah. Let me go uh, bring my computer in. People won't be able to see it, but I'm gonna. I can. Oh. Wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait. I've seen that. That's a Davis I right there. See it, but we can't. Who? You, how do you see it, but the rest of us can't? Oh, because I googled it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. There it is. That was the Davis, and uh, it was an American automobile manufacturer based in Van Nuys, California car company in San Fernando Valley region, which produced a three-wheeled automobile. That's what it was. It had three wheels. Yeah. And I think they were known for tipping over. Tipping over. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know. Um, I see why. I see a whole bunch of those now. Really? Not the, sa uh, not the same one, but a three-wheeler. Right, and then there was the uh, there was the uh, Kaiser Darren. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the one you mentioned before. That's, that's the, the one with the door that goes it, inside the car. But it also had yeah. lips on the front of it, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought I would do. Let me see here, Kaiser Darren. Let me see if I can find it here. Ah, God, I hate this. Yeah. Uh, Kaiser. Kaiser Darren. Yeah, I've seen those around. Yeah, Kaiser Darren. They're two R's, not one R. Okay. Let me see here. Here's oh here we go. Now I said I said it had lips. And uh, there uh, let me see here. Let me go here. Uh, let me move this up here so that we um, so that I can, oh, here we go. Can I make that even larger? No, there, well, there it is anyway, I'll show you. It's a Kaiser Darren, oops. Here, we don't, it just moved, it just changed. <laughs> here is, there we go. See that? It had, yeah. it had wow. it, it lips on it. Um, and what color is it, Charlie? I, I can't see it. Well, it hadn't come up yet. I'm oh. late. And how, there we go. Yeah. 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 There's a, on it's Facebook. a Kaiser. Yeah. Darren yeah. Roadster. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Somebody on the chat said the turbine car is a Chrysler. And that, yeah, it, it is a Mopar Chrysler. Yep. Anyway. It was, it was pretty cool because <clears throat> when you, you sit there and the cars are going out yeah. and there's a huge, huge crowd and we could see the, the, uh, the, that turbine car coming and uh so everyone's like quiet and we hear it go by it's really mm -hmm. really cool and, yeah and that there's a lot of stories the lady was telling us uh that thing will run on any flammable liquid so tequila and they also tried uh perfume and it, it ran on that so it ran on perfume what car was that that turbine car the turbine car wow yeah wow. jeff has probably stole three of those <laughs> well, what's this uh how do you know all about what i used to do i don't well i don't know alex <laughs> brought it up when you know how we jeff brought no, up that once he stole a car when, no, he, was, when he was a kid maybe maybe and who didn't That's steal okay. a car when they were a the kid okay. limitations are passed jeff yeah, oh, right. yeah. okay right but uh, the Kaiser Darren, it, the Kaiser is the same Kaiser as the hospital, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Made by the same, the same wow. family? Henry oh, J. Wow. Kaiser. Wow. wow. Do, you know, do you know how he started the hospital? Do you know? Ambulance? Car? No. <laughs> no. He started the hospital California. because he had a big company and they did all kinds of stuff with, like, uh, you know, steel and uh, with building cars and. He uh, was into steel and things like that, and uh, he had a lot of employees, and they needed health stuff being taken care of, and so, consequently, uh, he started a health plan for them. He started a hospital for them. Oh, yeah, in Richmond, California. In Richmond, California, yeah. Near his shipyards during World War II is what I right. And then what he did is he then expanded it beyond his company. And allowed people who were members of unions to join it, and that's when my parents joined it. And I, I was a Kaiser kid when I was in my—I don't think I hit ten yet. I was. I was born in Kaiser. Huh? I was born in Kaiser in 1958. Really? Okay. You know? Yep. Yeah. Adrian was in Kaiser too. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway. Kaiser. Yeah. So Tony, uh, uh, so you're not going down to Washington D.C. No. To honor the fallen dead. I mean, I went a couple of years. I used to want to. It's like you know, put a flag. I mean, it's nice, but. I don't know. I, I never found Washington a great place to go. You know. My brother's like, "What do we?" I says, "I mean, if I had, if my dad was buried there, I would go." I don't mean it to be disrespectful, but you're right. I mean, how many times can I go to Ford Theater? I mean, really. 
I like going there, you know, because it's, you know, the historical... Right, Lincoln life. said the same thing. You're right. right. I mean, it's weird, Alex. It's so... When you walk in there, it's kind of like you're stepping back in time because everything is the same there. Well, because they, like yeah, they maintained it the way it was because it's a, you know... It's... Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. I mean... I, I, I mean, I don't want to sound callous. I said, if the Mets were playing the Nationals, I probably would be more inclined to go because then I'd catch a baseball game. <laughs> I mean, that's what we did last time. Me and my brother went down. It's like, I don't think, I don't think they'll the ever night. tear down the Texas School Book Depository. Did you ever go? My brother went to that when he was working for Verizon. They brought a conference. He was up there on the tour. I don't know if you ever, did you ever do that tour? Mm -hmm. I don't think I there? ever did it. No, I didn't spend that much time in Dallas. Most of my time was in Houston. There's a YouTube video where they take you through it, including what the shooter saw. Yeah, the vantage point. He said that was a hard point. There you go, Tony, the vantage point. Yep. Well, and and, and are, are we supposed to believe that uh, he shot a, he shot him alone? No way. I don't buy it. You see, I believe it. Really? Yes. They I say, think it was a what are the chances? Well, the chances are that he was able to do it. He you know. was a uh, he was a sniper in the uh, yeah in the Marines I think yeah so he he knew his he knew what he was doing where where were you Alex when you heard the news I had I was in the Navy mm. and I was home in uh, in Marin County uh, on leave was taking off a, a couple of weeks uh, to spend with my parents and with my I guess girlfriend or was she my wife by that time? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, we uh, uh, I, I was uh, that's where we heard about it. And then a few days later, I'm sitting there watching television in the morning, and they're bringing out Oswald, and I watch him get shot on television. I watched that clip all that. You know, and people say, well, uh, you know, how can we ever convict Oswald easily? We had like a million witnesses. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you were watching television that morning, and I, yeah. I yelled out to my parents, I said, you better come up and see what just happened, you know. Mm -hmm. And they missed the whole thing. But I, I, I remember it happening. I remember yeah, it happening. I, I remember it too. I, I was like, Four or five, and we rode my grandfather's, and everybody's upset and crying all of a sudden watching TV. And I'm like, "What's going on? What's the big deal?" Yeah, yeah. It was a big deal to us. Well, you were old enough at that time. Yeah, and plus we were Catholic, we were Catholic high school, or Catholic right. grade school and stuff. Absolutely, it was the first Catholic uh, uh, president we had. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're in Chicago, uh, Charlie. Yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah, because I was going to say, geez, if you're in Texas, that was close. It was 63, yeah, so I was 13. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, well, whose TV set is on? Oh, well, it's got to be mine. Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, it's okay. going to make them turn the TV set off. <laughs> that was probably Adrian. <laughs> Can I? It's one of the kids. That's right. Let me turn on the TV and piss me uh, Here she is. Here, here she is. Here she is. Hi. Hi, Adrian. How you doing? She's got to take the volume. Wave at us. It's muted. Uh, hello, Adrian. How are you today? How are you? Oh, oh, oh yeah. That, the minute you turn on the mic, she gets shy. Yeah. When have you ever known her to really be shy? She's shy for like the first 10 minutes and then she's a crazy girl. Yeah. So anyway, so that's your kitchen. Yeah, yeah, we just remodeled it. I see, okay. Yeah. I told your wife you could have any color you want as long as it's white. <laughs> white, white and gray, yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, so we're trying. We tried to have a quiet summer because we just got two cars and remodeled the whole house all in one summer. So one, actually, one year in one year. So it's like now we have no money for a while. So well, we'd love to do something stuff to our place, and we can't. Mm. And we can't because anything we would do would be improving it for the people who own the place. Wouldn't yeah. be improving it for us, you know. Uh, and that's why we always were hoping and praying that they'd 
you know, go condo here and we'd be able to buy in and then we could take mm -hmm. our apartment and do with it what we wanted to do. But what's the use now? I'm going to be dead in a couple of years anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, hey, it's a puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a puppet show. Yeah. He doesn't have mm -hmm. to speak See this it? way. <laughs> How are you doing? I don't know. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Can I do it? Still do it? I can't. I uh, how are you doing? Come on. He's signing. She just said Alex Bennett is signing. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I'm joking. Anyway. Oh, man. I'm dizzy tonight. <sighs> it's also, it, it's weird hot here. You know, it's, the temperature right now is 73, but we got humidity, so it's sticky. It, it's you know, that way, in, it's that 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 way here, too, in time. Fremont. Yeah. It, it's a weird summer. No, he's trying to get out of the way of... Uh, oh. We're getting the tour now. We're getting there the we tour? Go. Here he goes. Where is he going now? Oh, no, I need to help Tiffany with something. She's trying to see something on my laptop. Mm -hmm. She wants to see something on your laptop, or the one? No, because we work at the same company, so she's trying to get on the VPN. So. Oh, I see. Oh, does she work at that company too? Yeah. yeah. That's how they met each other. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what? What are you doing? He's he's going. He's trying to get her on the VPN. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that's always fun. I don't like mm -hmm. VPN. They're they're far from perfect. That's well, they're sure. too slow. So I want to let you not know where I am. Okay, so I say I'm in London. Well, then everything moves at a snail's pace. Snail. The neat thing about it is, is when you go on YouTube and they have a video that you can't watch because of copyright laws in the United States. So you change the VPN to London and you watch it. Right. That's <laughs> that's correct. You know, that's, a, that's mainly what I use mine, or if I'm going to buy travel tickets or something, I change it to, like, New Mexico or something like that, and the tickets are cheaper than the Bay Area, and the same tickets. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good for saving money like that. Yeah. yeah. Because, because that market tends to be cheaper. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have as much money. Yeah. Well, anybody have anything they want to talk about? I'm tired. Oh, I also hide from Tony on it. Oh, you okay. <laughs> Oh, that's just, it that's doesn't do that for you, Tony. Sorry. Behind a wolf, I have to figure out how to get around it. <laughs> there you go. Let's see what else. <laughs> well, nothing else. Really. My uncle's place may go out of business. That's what I've been hearing. Your Ooh. uncle's place? Oh, you mean the hat's place? The hat's place. Uh -huh. I think they're going to slowly uh, liquidate the stock, it sounds like. That's what my cousin told me. Really? I think since the pandemic, a lot of the little small stores they sold to just probably went out of business. Well, pick me up about twenty hats, okay? I don't. Yeah, I only started talking to him again because he kept calling me, so we're talking. Yeah. So um, he's not my favorite person, but what am I gonna do? Is my Why? What's gone. happening with the hat companies? It's just people aren't buying hats anymore, or what? I think that when the pandemic hit, Alex, they sold to a lot of small stores, so they must have folded the small stores, and the business probably isn't there really. And then also China, where they buy from, a lot of their merchandise. Yeah. They had to shut factories down there, so it used to take them months to get stuff in overseas. So that slowed down. Yeah, I mean, so it's like, I, from what I hear, it might be gone in like a year or two. That's about it. What type of hats does he sell? It's mostly, uh, I would say, how can I, it's, I would say more for ethnic. So I would say more like, uh, how can, it's really for like, uh, say, Spanish, black and stuff like that. Right. Or they ball. I don't be politically correct when I say. <laughs> Come on, Tony. I'm thinking of like a century, you know. So it's like, but you know, it is really true. So it's like, you know, when Giuliani cleaned up 42nd Street, he put out his best stores. Like there were two stores right on 42nd Street and across the street from the Port Authority bus terminal. Arnold Hats. They're gone now. They were like gold mines. As soon as they cleaned it up and they ripped. Pushed them all out of there. That really hurt his you, business. You know what, they, know what, what, they, what he got rid of? What he pushed out of business was a, a store I loved on Forty Second Street. Which one? Hubert's Museum. I have to think. And, of and you would go I in, and they had all kinds of oddities. But in the in the window, they had a display of what they would sell, and they were selling like uh, 
I'm candy and 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 knives. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was the, always around knives. The knives yeah. in the window along with candy. You know, it was just <laughs> That's a, weird yeah, right? a weird mixture. A weird mixture. When I used to drop stuff off there, the owner Arnie used to say, "When you drop stuff off, Tony, put your wallet in your front pocket." This is why. Don't keep it in the back because they'll rip your pocket and you won't even know they'll take your wallet right out. Wow. Like they would bump into you, take the knife, rip your back pocket and take your money and you wouldn't eat like your wallet and you wouldn't even know. 42nd Street. Yeah. Yeah. Now I see why Jeff moved to Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw, every time I traveled to the city, I always put my wallet in the front when he told me that the old guy. Do you still do it? Yeah, I still do it. Ever since the old man told me that. Because I used to drop off stuff and take the train. And he used to say, where's your wallet? I said, in the front. Like, well, you should like, actually oh. leave yours in, 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 in the front pocket. Yeah, he always I've been told that. that. I just never do it. I have always got. I always had a wallet in my back pocket. Ever since the old guy told me that, Alex, I've always done that when I'm in the subway or anywhere. Really? Much. Yeah, Tra traveling I do, or I keep one of those... Uh, you know, the, not man purses, but those, you know, the ones that go around the chest. Oh, the fanny packs, like. Yeah, you look like a cop. <laughs> With the, yeah, usually I wear one of those around my chest because then everything's right there. My phone's right there, my wallet's right there, and that never comes off. Oh, okay, all right. My son uh, lives in Manhattan and uh, in Brooklyn, and he wears money in his shoes. In his shoes, wow. When he's, well, yeah, when he used to work in a in a bar and stuff like that at one okay. time, and he would have, you know, end of Saturday night he'd have a lot of cash. Yeah, put it in his sh shoes. That's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, can, yeah, yeah people, I knew people used to put money in their shoes here in the New York. The trouble is, is you got to take your shoe off every time you want a soda or something. Yeah, but if you so you wear bowl, you wear loafers or you wear you know. Like I don't know, you know what I'm wearing now? This is this is how old I'm getting. I'm wearing Sketchers. I actually yeah. had those too, Alex. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I bought a pair of sketchers. Shoes. They're comfortable without yeah. laces, right? Oh, I got laces. I think oh, my no, brother got them. And to get them without laces, it looks like they have laces. Yeah, my brother got the non-laces. You slip into I got them laces. like loafers. I love. I'm In old age, I have found that accommodating. Oh, but the non Yeah, my brother likes the laces. I still got laces. Yeah. So they make them with the design on them that looks like a, a lace? Yeah. It's... No, 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 no. no it it literally it. looks like a lace. Yeah. But it's uh, it's elastic. Slipping in. Yeah, you slip it in. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, my, my regular everyday shoe sneakers are are uh, sketchers, and I just I get them comfortable, tie the knot, double tie the knot. And I that's just, what I do. But I don't even have off. to tie the knot. Right. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, I, I use them yeah, as flip Yeah, and, and I notice that on television, I notice a lot of people wearing them, too. And the the version I have, the one I'm talking about, yeah, you can get them with laces. Yeah, but I, I you know, uh, the first time I bought them, I, I just bought them because Bobby Slayton, you know, is oh, he doing them? the ads for it and so on. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, you it know, comfortable. I wanted to, you know, kind of do business for Bobby. <laughs> and 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 I got a pair and I ordered them and they came and I went, what's this? I said, you can't tie them up. And then I realized it was like a, like having a loafer. You know, you just slip those things on and you're good to go. <laughs> you know who Skechers' biggest retailer is? Who? I Amazon. have who, who Amazon. Really? I have, Amazon. Go on their site and they have 50 different types of Skechers and mm. wow. a lot of them are just. You know, the sneakers are all the same thing, but if it says Air Jordan on it, or, I mean, that's not a sketcher, but, God damn, the Air Jordan, like, I was looking the other day at, at sketchers, you know, and stuff, but Air Jordan, $500 a pair, I'm like, what are they, nuts? Yeah, I never <laughs> are they, are they worth the value, Tony? I mean, I never, I never bought the Air Jordans when they came out. I mean, they were like a basketball. I mean, when I used to play basketball, I knew kids who had to have those, the red ones and the white. Those are the originals. But they used to like, they used to mug you for those sneakers when I was in school. Oh, they literally. probably still do. Jeez. They literally, when the Jordans came out, you couldn't get those. I always used wore Nikes. I didn't want. I don't want to pay two hundred fifty dollars to run up. It wasn't going to make you play any better. 
If you can't if you can't pass the ball or shoot, what is the sneaker gonna do? Nothing. That's, That's right. what I used to say. <laughs> Other than the make it play better cool. and shoot. Well Kanye Kanye has this brand Yeezy. Yeezy. And Yeezy. and uh, he has some pullovers that he's selling at the gap. He made a deal with the Gap to sell them there. It's a two hundred and fifty dollar, two hundred and fifty dollar pullover, or what do you call it? sweatshirt? You know what I'm talking about? With the hood, yeah. you know, hoodie. With the hoodie. hoodie. With the hoodie. Yeah. And he's got them in the stores, in weights in in garbage bags. <laughs> so you go through the garbage bag and get your. Two hundred and fifty dollar <laughs> pullover, and uh, and now uh, a lot of people are complaining. Well, this is in bad taste. Yeah, I mean that is. It's in bad taste. taste. It's it's mocking poor people. Yeah. And he his whole attitude was you know, basically fuck off. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm I, 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 I'm I I consider myself an artist. I'm trying to sell my product in an artful way. I put the, put them in these bags. It makes it different, you know. It also drives people into the store just to see them because they kind of look like art pieces out there. Mm -hmm. And I agree with them. Screw you. <clears throat> you know, I mean, why you're making fun of the homeless? You know, it's ridiculous. So yeah, the gap, I, the gap is still in business. And it's not. Well, everybody's so <clears throat> judgmental today because they all have to top each other for who can be the most judgmental. Yeah. You know? The Republicans are doing a pretty good job. <laughs> oh yeah, they're doing a great job. But but don't, we don't we don't have to talk about the Republicans tonight because oh, Phil okay, isn't here. about that. <laughs> Phil isn't here. Yeah. We got Phil Jr. with us though. Yeah. <laughs> but they, Phil Jr. <laughs> yeah, they, they, Phil Jr. can't take up the slack. No, I can't fill those shoes. Those are too big. He said, I can't fill those shoes up. Alex, you created a monster with him. He's entertaining. I told him. <laughs> he's got an ego now. <laughs> well, he's entertaining to a point. Well, he's actually really, and I think, I'm telling you, you created a celebrity with him. I'm not just saying. Oh, he's no. no, 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 no. No, as a matter of fact, he is perhaps <laughs> the most vilified person who does this show. Really? I get, I get at least. A, a half a dozen complaints every week. How can you have that moron on your show? How can you have that guy saying what he says? You know, and I'm going. You know, I I like having a moron on my show. It makes me look good. His last name is not moron. It's not moron. Yeah, but I mean, you know. So I mean, yeah. You, I, I, I never have anybody ever write me and say, "Boy, that feels terrific." You know, they, yeah. that that I never hear. Well, I can tell everybody. He's a nice, he is a very nice person. Well, I mean, like last then, night, you know, where somebody got a hold of me and said, How, what a nice guy. You know, he says, you were worried about your health, and he was there for you. You know? He, and, he was very positive last night. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's Phil. He had an agenda yeah. that he wanted to talk about, but he put that aside for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, what friends and, and do. I, and I told him, I said, that's because Phil really is a really nice guy. He yeah. really is. It's just that I can't see it. I can't equate the two. Really? He's a nice guy, but mm -hmm. he had believes all the in all these evil things that mm -hmm. don't do anybody any good. You know, so his so it, it I don't know. It's a very weird mixture. Uh, and it's just one one of those people that I have those friends too. I will talk about every single subject except for politics. Right. Absolutely. I'm and there, there, there's a bunch of car guys. Oh my God. Then today in Carmel, three guys, two guys have McLaren hats. I was about to walk over and talk to those guys. And one guy had a Trump hat. <laughs> oh my God. That's what they make guns for, Brian. <laughs> so I just, you know, just. They're, they're the friends I have, same thing. No politics. Uh, I, uh, you know, it, it, they, they were saying that, that in younger people now, younger people won't, for instance, have as a roommate anybody who doesn't agree with them politically. Wow. You know. Don't blame them. Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't, you don't spend all night arguing with your roommate. I right. had I, I had a lot of friends who I didn't agree with politically over the years, you know, who still were my friends. 
you know. I, I, but that's I don't not want today. The world, different times. Yes. Yeah, different times. I don't want it. It is different times. People are so divisive yeah. that, that you just won't have anything to do with, you know. Uh, however, you know, let's say you know, let's say you were going out with a, some woman and she was a sure thing. I'm saying it this way because I know that Adrian is there. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're a sure thing. Would you kind of go along with them and just kind of go, oh, yeah, okay, every time they mention politics, just because you wanted to get, you know. A piece. The next morning, that'd be a great argument to get her kicked out of the house. <laughs> You're so cold. If, if you need a reason, that's a good reason. That's right. Just wait you, wait till the morning. Oh, no, I, that, that kind of. I see it. That kind of. CNN. <laughs> that kind of never bring over to my house. I go over to theirs. Because then after we were through, I could just get the hell out of there. That's right. Get a motel. That way, if, if they go nuts when they find out that you're a Democrat and tear up the room, it's a hotel. Let them well, I just, I just don't, you know, I just don't know what's with people. I mean, you know, I had people who were, were Republicans. Fine. You're a Republican. You know, I don't agree with you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat myself. But, you know, that was the, the only difference. Now it's like, I love the fact, what I can't believe are all the people who absolutely adore Donald Trump. And I go, this man to begin with is ugly, he's fat, he's got a bad comb over, he has no morals, he's a terrible human being. And what is it about this guy you find wonderful? Tony can't even come up with an answer to that one. You know, you know what I do like about him, though, honestly? What? I don't know so much as like. It's like there's no filter with him, which no, I that think... That doesn't he, matter. The, you, this is a guy you're talking about as being president. And be, having no filter is not something you want in somebody who's a president of the United States. Right. I don't know. I mean, I... I there's something I, I kind of find him entertaining now. I know you. I don't know. There's just something. He was entertaining. I'll have to admit he, that. Like, At like, one point, he was entertaining. That was until he became president, and then he became just boring because it was relentless. Every day, it was the same goddamn thing. He try, try, woke up in the morning and said, "How am I going to dominate the press today?" He's still like all over the place. I've he, never found viciousness entertaining. You know, no. that, that's a nope. very good point, Charlie. Nope. Do, do you think also Trump sort of put this thing where the president is in TV, on TV nonstop? Because Biden's on an awful lot, I think too much. But Obama wasn't really on that much. And do you guys remember like presidents being well, on the, well, the TV or media so much? Biden is doing it to his, uh, uh, to his, de uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Demise. Demise. Yeah, this right. Well, to, to his detriment. Yeah, detriment. yeah, to his detriment because he needs to stay off TV. Yeah, he should really yeah. let other people talk for him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, uh, but, and come on occasionally when it's really important. You know, uh -huh. but uh, he has just looked so out of it lately. I mean, I saw him signing some bill, and he looked like, "Where am I? Who's? Am I passing mm -hmm. out pens here? You know? Who <laughs> has a pen? Yeah, yeah, I know." It's I saw that one. He saw, he, and he didn't look good, yeah. did it? Yeah, Shermer was right next to him, right? Like, trying to help him, or somebody was right next to him, like, yeah. Yeah, the optics weren't very good. I no, think he he's uh, a little sick again from... Uh, he may have long COVID. Yeah, I think he's got COVID again. His wife got it. I mean, he can't shake it. He's always testing positive. Well, no, you, you can test positive several times after you've had it. Yeah, yeah most happens. people, most people that have, especially older people that have COVID, it can go on for two or three weeks. So, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, or or people that are not vaccinated, yeah. lowered immune systems. So. Yeah, and yes. today in Washington, they were uh, they had this hearing to see if they would release the uh, the affidavits in the Mar-a-Lago situation. Trump says he wants it done. Of course he does, because it weakens the... Uh, the uh, oh, yeah, and also he'll find out who ratted on him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh, they 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 don't want to release it. They say they're going to fight it. They'll, Actually, I think it's NBC that brought up the, uh, the the started it with the with the judge and said we'd like it released because it's yeah. new, newsworthy. Sure. Yeah. I, I I forget who was talking today, but they were they were interviewing somebody and they started mentioning TikTok that they were using that they were looking at TikTok and they were trying to explain something. And then the 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 person who's interviewing him says, "So, are you using TikTok as your news source?" <laughs> so funny. I I was on the CNN radio and I, I missed who it was they were talking to, but it's pretty hilarious. Well, what's you know what's really terrible is uh, is is uh, the, the the things we're using as news sources today, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. Anyway. Somebody was on the show a while back that said they were getting their news from TikTok. Huh? Somebody was on this show uh, a, a few months ago saying they get, they get their news What TikTok. news on TikTok? A bunch uh, of kitties I mean, sleeping with each other? I, I don't know. Some woman, uh, uh, some woman wearing a bikini? Oh, jiggling her tits up and down? It thing in Canada. Yeah, I think the truck guy, right? I could be wrong. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he was using TikTok to get his news, and I'm going, oh, I, I, don't, yeah. I, I go flipping through TikTok, and I somehow there's no news there. And then we checked his his Facebook page, and it was like every five minutes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that was that guy. It might be. Well, if I were to bring over my, my computer nice here and, and start yeah. going flipping through TikTok, what news is there on TikTok? I never come across news. It's How do you eat a white, four White Castles in 20 seconds or less? I mean, how is that news? What? How do you eat four White Castles in 20 seconds or less? Oh, that's news. Yeah, yeah, that's You know, serious. they're always doing stupid things. Yeah. Alex, the internet's a dangerous weapon. You could spread rumors so fast, they wouldn't even know it. Well, it's going at the speed of light now. You yeah, know. It's, like, it's crazy. I mean, you know what I don't get either? How the mis how the information's coming out where I was I don't know where it was from where it was somebody on MSNBC I was listening to it and they're like he can have nuclear uh, the papers can have nuclear uh, documents in it they don't even know what documents he has yet but they're just speculating of what it could be that's right that's what the news does yeah. it's almost like nobody even knows what it is yet but yet they're going to assume what it might yeah. be. I think because they have to they have to fill out the time. That's it's for like, sure. That's didn't the that's government a, that's it, yellow journalism? No, no, you know, no. he could have sold secrets to the Russians. Do you know that for sure? Because we don't know what he has yet. No, but I'm just going to say it so it can stick to the wall. No, that's but he could. Bullshit. He could. That's the problem. But I can also say he's got big. He's got pictures of uh, Roswell of the alien, and they're going to believe that. Oh, he's crazy. It's like they shouldn't even report yeah, that. Report that picture of the alien. That's on the same order form as the Charmin toilet paper. paper. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. But what I don't get is, how can they let them go on to these people and just speculate and say, you really can't say that because we don't know what they have. How come Trump took the things? Because it, because because any other news source is going to say that. Well, so they, if you're they, a news they, source, they cover, Tony, if you have a news source and, they, and these other news sources are saying that, oh, well, they, we're speculating what he could have. What are you going to do? What are you going to talk about on your news source? Well, the government is really not the truth. They're really just the boring. Government. I know, but what, what are you going to talk about on that day? You're not going to talk about the Mets. No, but I, mean, I, I don't thing. think you could talk about anything. That's why you have misinformation because they're actually putting it out there. But I know, but the news source, the news stations aren't just going to sit there and, and talk about the beautiful weather outside. They're going to start talking about it. Right I didn't hear Walter Cronkite report that. They I have 50, you, they have 50 people, minutes. After that. commercials, they have 50 minutes an hour to fill, and they're going to uh -huh. fill it with anything that they can lay their hands on, and they're going to play it to death. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, so, so Alan. see, the, the, the search happened on a Tuesday. A, a yeah. week ago, Wednesday, Phil was on and claimed that they only took four documents. He yeah. knew about it before it was broadcast. <laughs> and of course, he was totally wrong again. They took like 15 boxes out of there. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I, he probably read it somewhere. He probably he's a smart guy. Sure. He probably didn't just think it up on one of his uh, Republican broadcasts, a uh, dredge or, or, or something. But, like, you know the guy James Caldwell, Allen? 
Yeah. He was, I could send you the article. He said on the news today, he says, this could be bigger than 9-11. Oh, come could on. Could be. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to I mean, kill we didn't let, I mean, it could be. I, it's like they just let them say whatever they want right. just to feed it. I believe you, Tony. You don't need to send the article. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that. I can't game believe game Carville that. said that. Carville. He did, Alex. I have the thing. No. I can find it to you. Yeah, I watched it this morning. He was he was on MSNBC, one of those shows. It could be bigger than nine eleven. This case. Uh, and he said it. It was on TV. It's a different. It, 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 it could be big in its own way, because it's not the same kind of thing. I mean, one is the bombing of a, basically the collapsing yeah, of two buildings, exactly. and the other is uh, is is uh, what I consider treasonous, but nevertheless, uh, not on the same par with that. Here it is. I got it right here. It's on the hill.com. And then I was just reading. James Carville, Trump scandal could be the biggest story since 9-11. Since 9-11. Well, that I might agree with. Yeah, might be a big story. He said he didn't say bigger than. He said since. He's yeah, predicting. misinformation, Tony. Yeah, you just spread misinformation. You're just mis <laughs> oh, you're a well, bad you're trying to do it. I'm taking it. In the sake, of, in the sake of trying to show how misinformation drink. is spread, you spread it yourself. Everybody have a drink. In honor of Phil, Phil Jr., we have to drink. We have it. Oh, it's like, information. Yeah. I mean, I was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have it exact. Huh? Just like what Phil says, exactly. It's a little different. It's a little different the way well, he said it from the way you described it. But I'm in your camp, Alex. Should he even compare it to that anyway? He wasn't comparing it. He said it's the biggest story since. Since. I mean, I guess it's his opinion. I mean, no. Don't, aren't you listening to me, Tony? Come on now. Uh, blow your nose and get all those cobwebs out of your head. Like what he said was it was the biggest event since 9-11 not bigger than 9-11 which is how you put it sure but you know what even the way he puts it I don't even buy what he's saying because I think that's a panic thing what do you mean fear what do you mean I think, I, 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 think it's, I think it's a pretty terrible thing it's the first time in history a president of the United States has had, had, had to have his home raided, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the government could get the uh, documents that they were entitled to have because they belonged to the government. That's right. I want to know what he has. That's what I want to know. Well, uh, he had, uh, he had, the, he had the, all the stuff about Roswell. Yeah. I think he might have had. The, I can see him yeah. with that out. I want to. Do we really have the alien in captivity? You, you know, he's probably it. thinking he was uh, born an alien, and that's why he's got the Roswell stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, oh boy. Well, I'm, you know, I'm exhausted every night. I don't know why. I just. Uh, I think it's the weather, right? So. Well, I think it's the weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Could be depression. Oh, but could be my cancer. Could be my cancer. Yeah, that might be bothering you a little bit. Well, it's like, like little, little Richard is an excuse to me once, you know, why I couldn't make my show. He said, yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't do it, but I had a touch of the cancer. <laughs> I figured that was about the lamest excuse I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> anyway, there's the theme song. It's playing. Oh, yes. Oh, very nice to have you people here, you know. Yeah. It's just that lately I've just been so tired. Oh, that's the sign of lymphoma uh, but, uh, but I don't have any of the other things you know so you don't have cancer I, I'd bet on it well we'll see we'll see I may I'd but it, it's probably doable you know Come thank on. you very much Jeff for being here a man who has faced death and been at death's door <laughs> so he knows what it's all about uh, uh, Alan thank you for being here uh, 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 and of course, Charlie. Uh, what? How many toes is it? Four toes. <laughs> yep, that's all I got. Charlie, four toes. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Tony, for coming in with all that absolutely empirical evidence of what's going on in our country. And of course, uh, Brian and his lovely um, ventriloquist dummy, Adrian. Uh, Trying to sleep. 
Oh, you trying to get <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. There's our, our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they'll be back again tomorrow night, I'm sure, and hopefully we'll get a few more people, and we'll have a Friday edition of this show. See you tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.